Hey guys, it's John here. Today we're going to take a look at the Ownhammer Revolution series impulse responses. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the feature set of these IRs, as well as give some examples on how I like to use them. So let's get started right away. Over here, we have the main Ownhammer folder. When you've downloaded all the Ownhammer IRs, it's always a good idea to extract them to the exact same folder just to keep everything nice and tidy and well organized. Let's go ahead and click on the Ownhammer IRs folder. And upon opening this folder, you will be presented with a couple of different folder types. Number one is the documentation folder. This contains all the manuals for all the different products. I always highly recommend checking out the manuals for the products that you purchase because they contain a lot of useful information. And then under that, we have the mono files with the different sample rate options and the true stereo files also with the different sample rates. I would always advise to use the sample rate that either matches the session of your DAW or the sample rate that your modeling platform accepts. My DAW is always set to 48,000 Hertz. So we're going to click on that folder. And in this folder, you can see all the different cabinets that I have, including the Revolution Debut Bundle Cab Mixes, which is an exclusive folder that comes with the debut bundle. Then if we click on one of those folders, you will see the available speaker types for this particular cabinet. Let's click on that. And then you'll get into this folder here, which contains all the different mic, mix and voicing options, as well as the summary folder down here. Now the summary folder contains a sort of best off file, which is this one right here. It's a very balanced sounding IR that can give a good idea of the overall tonal characteristics of the cab and speaker. So if you're just getting started and you want to get an idea of the feel of this cabinet with this speaker option, I would advise to just start here and try this IR. And these files right here represent the different voicing options. And these can also be seen as a sort of preview on how all the different voicings sound. So this is always a great place to start. Let's go back to the speaker folder right here and let's go over to the mics folder and check out what's in there. So as you can see, we have a bunch of 57 mics all placed on different parts of the speaker. That's based on a very popular microphone that's very often used in guitar recordings. And then under here, we have some more single mics as well as some room mics. You can blend those mics in to get a more roomy sound. And then down here, we have the voiced mic folders. These basically contain the same mics as the regular one, only the voicings will be applied here. So if you want a more brighter sound, go to these ones here and they're all labeled with BR, which stands for bright. Or if you'd like a sound with a bit more mids, which can be very useful for live playing, you can go to the mid boost files here and try those out. Then let's go over to the mixes folder. The mix folders contain a lot of nice mixes, as you can see here. And the names are all very descriptive. So for example, if you want a very vintage guitar sound, just go to the vintage file and try that one. If you're into something like death metal, perhaps the scoop mixes will work for you and so forth. All right, let's go back one folder. And down here, you also have the mix files, but then with the voicing supplied, just as I explained with the mics folders. So that's basically all you need to know about the folder structure. So in short, if you want to keep things very, very simple and have very few choices, stick to the summary folder to begin with. And if you want more choices than that, just go over to the mixes or mics folder and try some of those files out to see which ones work for you. And once you really get into the flow of things, you can go over to the different voicing folders to see how those files work for your situation. For example, if you're a player that mainly plays on stage or in a rehearsal space, the mid boost files may work for you very well. Those can help to make sure that your guitars do not get lost in the mix. Or if you're using a very bright amplifier or bright modeling platform, perhaps try the dark files to kind of counter that brightness and so forth. Now let's go over to my DAW and try some of these IRs on some guitar tracks to see how they sound. So we are now in Cubase 10.5 and I'm using Helix Native by Line 6 for all the guitar tones. I love that platform a lot. So I'm running Helix on both guitar tracks here, left and right. And I am using the derailed Ingrid amplifier here along with some subtle room reverb. And I'm applying the IR processing on the bus of these guitars. You can also load these IRs into Helix Native itself, of course, without a problem. For these demonstrations, I like to use Nadir by Ignite because it's a very handy platform to demonstrate these IRs to you. So I have it set to stereo. The left guitar is going through this IR and the right guitar is going through this IR. Right now, I'm using the 112 DVRB cabinet and I have the warm mix loaded up. Let's take a quick listen to how this sounds. <laughs> The 
112 DVRB is very nice and I like how it sounds with this part, but I think a slightly bigger sounding cabinet would be good for this part. So in this case, I want to try the 115 VVRB. Let's click on that and click on the speaker. Let's open the mixes folder and try a mix in here. I think I'd like to try the thick mix. And we're going to do the same thing for the right side. There we go. Let's take a listen now. <laughs> Yeah, that's better. So that's the sound that I had in mind. The thick mix is pretty much perfect for me for this segment. But for the sake of the demonstration, let's try a couple of other mixes. I'm going to solo the guitars. And let's take another listen. Let's try the scoop one mix. I also quite like the sound of that one. Let's also try the cut mix for extra brightness. All of them sound pretty good in their own way, but I prefer the thick mix for this segment. So let's go back to that one and take another listen in full band context. Here we go. Yeah, I just love how that sounds. Very cool. Now let's try another guitar tone, something a bit more crunchy. So over here we have another segment. Let's take a quick listen to see what we're dealing with here. So that's a nice rock and roll kind of classic rock sound. And again, I have Helix Native set up here on both guitars. This time I'm using the Brit Plexi Bright Amp model. Just that with some subtle room reverb again. And then let's open the IR loader again. Right now I'm running the 412 ORNG H75 BB1 speaker. And I am running the classic 3 mix as you can see. But for this example, I'd like to try something a bit more traditional. So we're going to go to the 412 MRBW cabinet with the M75 GNR speaker. This time, let's start off by going to the mics folder and trying some single mic captures. The 75D sweet spot is very cool. So let's try that one out and let's take a listen. That already sounds pretty stellar, and this is just a single mic capture. Let's try some other ones. Let's go with the 57A cap capture. That's the same microphone, but placed on a different position on the speaker. And this gives you a very different sound as you can hear. Let's try another microphone. Let's try the 87. That one has a fuller and darker sound. I like that one. And for the sake of this demonstration, let's also try the room IR. And the rear IR. Those will sound a bit strange on their own. You can use them either for getting a special effect in your guitar tone, or to blend them in with a regular microphone. Blend them in subtly and you'll get a more roomy sound. For this example, I thought that the 57D Sweet Spot IR was just perfect. So I'm just going to go with that one. Let's take another quick listen. Yep, I really like how that sounds. 
Now let's try something a bit heavier. So this is a heavy rock clip. Let's take a quick listen to see what we're dealing with here. So nice and thick heavy tones with plenty of mids. We are running Helix Native just as before. Let's take a quick look at the settings. For this one I'm using the Placator Dirty Amp set to the HPE mode with the C45 switch on. And these are the settings. Then let's open the IR loader again. As you can see I'm currently using the 412 MRCB cabinet with the V30 English one speaker. It's already sounding pretty solid, but for these guitars I'd like to try one of the cabinet blends. And let's go with the ORNG plus trad folder. Okay, let's go over to the mixes folder and let's try the same forward three mix. Here we go. Let's take a listen to how that sounds. I really like how that sounds and I'm really enjoying the sort of three-dimensional roar that these uh, IRs have. And now for demonstration purposes I'm going to try some of the different voicings for you. First I'll play a quick section soloed with the current mix and then I'll try one or two of the different voicings. <laughs> Now let's try the mid boost voicing with the exact same mix. You can really hear how those files have more mid range. Now let's try the mid cut files. And very clearly a more scooped sound with more emphasis on the low and high end. That voicing works great for metal. Let's also try the bright voicing. And the dark voicing. And finally let's try the tight one voicing. Great, so those really tighten up the low end. As you can hear the voicings can be a very powerful tool to get a guitar tone that works for your personal situation. But if you prefer to keep things very simple you can always stick to the mic, mixes or summary folders. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoy these Ownhammer impulse responses. Please like and subscribe for more content and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.